So let's have a lesson on um, this exercise number five from Giuliani's opus number one. This is thirds in G major. Um, this comes from my ebook, 10 Classical Etudes, uh, which is a collection of classical etudes. And there's a link to the ebook in the YouTube info channel or on the website at Werner Guitar Editions. Um, this particular etude is more on the exercise side of the etudes. So there's some really beautiful pieces in the book and then there's um, more educational pieces. This is definitely by far one of the most educational pieces you can find, maybe in the in the guitar repertoire, um, for a couple of reasons. Um, one reason, playing thirds on the guitar is really, really great for your technique. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. But the other thing is that um, sometimes you have these pieces that will um, organize your thoughts in terms of music and in terms of how music works on an instrument and this is one of those etudes that really um, after playing it for a little while you'll become so in tune with thirds that you'll be able to play them without thinking about them too much so in this piece for example you'll probably just think of the lower the lower note and then you'll just play thirds through the whole etude so it, it like changes the way that you you read music and you interpret music on the instrument. Um, so let's talk a little bit about how thirds improve your technique and why this etude is so great. And then let's just do a little walkthrough of the piece. Um, the first thing I'll say is just, um, there's fingering in, in my music, but not everywhere because you want to get used to reading thirds. But anywhere where it might be unclear, I've, I've fingered it very carefully. In, right, in the right hand, I'm just doing the thumb and the eye finger, like Giuliani suggests in uh, way back in his time and in his editions. Um, and I think it's just good, good practice for keeping your thumb in front of the finger. So keeping those two fingers out of each other's way. Um, if you're more on the early intermediate side, um, you'd be careful that your two fingers don't compete for space. They, they must be separated and bypass each other, like when you're making a fist. In terms of the left hand, thirds are really great for your technique because it keeps you on your fingertips. If you're two folded over, you'll mute strings out by accident. So you have to be right on your fingertips and your fingers have to be really curved. If your fingers aren't curved, you'll be throwing out your wrist all the time and you'll never work up speed and some of the shapes will just never work for you. So you must have your fingers very curved and you must be on your fingertips. There's also a certain amount of finger independence involved. Um, when you're doing shapes like this one, going to this one, you have to have two fingers down while the other two fingers prepare. And that brings me to my next um, tip as to how to practice the piece, is that you might wanna first practice the piece in block thirds. That's taking each group of two notes um, and placing them together. If you don't know what thirds are, thirds are, are just simply the, um, if you think of a major scale, one, two, three, and then you play those two notes, one and three, that's a third, in this case a major third. A minor third would be, have a minor interval. Um, but we don't need to get into that just now. First thing, practicing this piece um, in block thirds. So you could just take the two notes, So, by 
by taking those two notes, you'll really learn the shape of thirds, and you'll also learn what's required in the left hand. So the first couple notes are the perfect example. See how I'm holding these notes and then these two fingers come down like this? And for a moment, oh, all four of them are down? That's what you want to aim for in your, in your practice, at least. Um, and some students will have a hard time with that. They'll go... They'll like jump their fingers out and things like that. But you must get used to connecting one group of thirds to the next group of thirds. Um, now, so you can practice the piece in the two ways. You can go through the whole piece in block thirds. Trying to get comfortable with the shapes and the duality of holding one group down while getting another group. And then you should also practice it one note at a time. Second finger, first finger, fourth finger, third finger, open string, second, first, four, three, one, open, three, two. When you start to go fast with a piece, of course it's inevitable that it's more efficient to get the next note. So to get the next note um, that's occurring in the music while holding the previous notes, right? So while you hold your first finger, you get your fourth finger until the third finger comes in. In a way, it's almost like there's two voices, right? There's a lower voice and an upper voice. And they're always um, like crisscrossing or creating a chain link. While this one rings, this one plays. And while this one is ringing, the next note plays. And when the next note plays, so they're always overlapping each other, even across the groups of thirds. So although it's very important to practice it in block shapes, Musically speaking, that's not necessarily going to create the overlapping chain link uh, that you want from the music. So that's two ways of practicing the piece. And just make sure that you really have your hand turned around like this so you can, you can grab notes without any big lurches in the hand. The other thing that you might find helpful is that most of the fingerings that I've included, most of them, um, include... Um, um, guide fingers. So one of the fingers will stay down as you grab new notes. So in this case, it's like the third is staying down a lot of the time and allowing me to make my shifts more accurate. So that's really helpful. Um, but there's also sometimes in this piece where there's no good fingerings. Um, and Giuliani's fingerings aren't always good. He just jumps fingers around a lot. There's a couple of cases where you could like create nice legato shapes, but it's just, if you did that all the time, it would get really wacky. Like there's some periods of the piece where you'd be changing position every two sixteenth notes, and that's just a little too much. So there's some areas of the piece where I just stay in second position. Sorry. Even if it's not the most efficient way of fingering it. Like there's better legato ways of fingering some of that stuff because there's so much of it, you can't just be doing it all the time. Okay, so the other thing is that you can play this at various tempos. I always start my practice session going very slowly. <laughs> just to practice a nice legato sound and very secure Playing. So practice it very slowly and don't go faster than you can play it well. Um, the only other thing that I'll talk about is, is the position shifts on the second page there. Make sure that when you're shifting that the arm is just moving the hand around and that the thumb is staying with the fingers, particularly with the second finger. If like the textbook guitar technique is to keep your thumb behind the second finger, then just keep, whenever you're shifting, keep that thumb in place. So if I was demonstrating... There's my thumb there. still there. 
thumb is still there. So don't let your thumb drag behind. That's a very, very common problem. Um, so make sure that the arm is just moving your nice hand position around and that your thumb is just moving along with it. That way, no matter where you are on the guitar, you're maintaining this great hand position with the knuckles kind of parallel with the strings and whatnot. Um, what other little tiny things? There's a couple of spots where the basses will create crazy squeak. Um, I've, I went through my score and, and wrote the word squeak, actually above all the places where it was particularly dangerous and there's there was only like five of them um, and you can do the same with your own playing and then for those places uh, I just made sure that I did a hop rather than use a guide finger directly and I think that's just that's like a, it's not a huge concern but if you're a more advanced player um, you should just aim to like reduce some of the squeaks and you can just write them in and just be careful with those couple of spots so I hope you enjoyed that. I know it's more on the educational side, but I love this kind of etude that really challenges my hand. And in particular, after playing it for a while, I just noticed that my hand position sometimes gets lazy if I don't practice thirds. So if my hand's like this, I'm getting a little lazy. With thirds, I'm so encouraged to bring my hand over like this. So it's, it's a really great reminder for that. So stay tuned for the, the following etudes in the book. The next one is octaves. And octaves are very similar to thirds, so the goals will be very similar to this video, except the intervals are going to be so much larger because octaves are just a larger shape. So it's much more of a left-hand workout. In fact, it's like a real, true left-hand workout. This one was a little bit more sensitive, a little bit more delicate. You have to have this really great hand position, try to be smooth. The octaves are going to be a little bit more like a pumping nylon exercise or something. Uh, where you're, you're really working out.